We spend all our time talking about sperm competition being important in the evolution of human sexuality. You might expect, therefore, that when you look at the human ejaculate, what you would see would be a really fit and athletic and, and dynamic set of sperm, all very good at shooting up faster than anybody else's sperm and going and fertilizing the egg. But that's not what you see. You look down a microscope at human sperm, and you see a whole array of very sick and lame-looking uh, sperm. Some of them have big heads, some of them have two heads, coiled tails, hunchbacks with bent mid-pieces, and so on. Now, the traditional view is that these are, are just mistakes in spermatogenesis. We took the view that maybe these have a role, and it struck us that what they could well be doing in sperm competition, instead of trying to fertilize eggs themselves, is to try and stop other male sperm from fertilizing eggs, either by just getting in their way, blocking passages through the cervical mucus, wrapping themselves around them, or doing something much more dynamic and exciting, like roaming around trying to kill sperm from other males. And so, because that's kamikaze-type behavior, we call this a kamikaze sperm hypothesis. And then that makes the whole ejaculate a very competitive and dynamic entity, or organ as we would call it, instead of a collection of lame sperm, which other people would see. If you want to fight a war, you need an army. Um, can you tell me about uh, something about the composition of the army? Is there a general? <laughs> no, I don't think there's a general. Um, but uh, certainly not all of the soldiers are the same. Everybody's familiar with the normal sperm with the nice oval head and the long tail mm -hmm. that swims across and uh, looks really athletic. But if you look down a microscope at a human ejaculate, normally, I mean ab absolutely normal, mm -hmm. every normal male, uh, has a real mixture of sperm there, some of which are incredibly lame. They, they just go around in circles. Some of them have got huge heads, some have got tiny heads with no DNA in, in it at all. Um, some have got very short tails, some have got coiled tails. And the question was, why? Why? There should it, be are, a are reason. These, they're, they're, well, to us, we, we were evolutionary biologists, something like 40% uh, or more of the sperm inside an ejaculate uh, look strange and look as though they couldn't fertilize an, an egg even if you hit them with it. Um, so why 40% is... A lot of people said these are just mistakes. Males just aren't capable of making sperm efficiently and so there are going to be a lot of mistakes, but 40% is too too many. And Evolution would have taken care of it, isn't it? Yes, we, would have, we said evolution would have taken care of it. So these different types must have a function of some sort. And to cut a long story short, uh, we, we concluded that these different types of sperm were actually doing different things. We couldn't identify what they were all doing, uh, but uh, the coiled tail sperm, for example, um, which are old sperm, uh, maybe even on the verge of death, uh, these are the ones we think that go into the cervical mucus. Again, I, I have to explain, that's the woman's cervix. It's got a plug of cervical mucus in. Now, that is actually a wonderfully complex structure, that mucus. It has channels through it that branch um, and go off to crypts in the side of the, of the cervix. And those channels are just one sperm head wide, one or two sperm heads wide. So any sperm that gets into one of those channels and just sits there, can even die there if it likes, coil its it tail, blocks. block it, uh, it means that any sperm that another male puts in, another man puts in, will find it more difficult to get through. They've either got to go through channelless um, mucus. Or, yeah. or and how many channels are there? Tens or hundreds? Oh, oh no. Thousands? I, I couldn't tell you actually, but thousands rather than tens. Uh -huh. um, so you need a lot of sperm to, to block them.